Esther chapter 5. Kind of interesting chapter. Like said, we've been looking at the tribulation period and we know the Antichrist is going to sit down at, at a table. Make a peace treaty which he's going to break. What chapter 5 has to do with that, I, I don't know. Now it came to pass on the third day. They've been fasting three days and three nights. No water, no food. Esther's like, you know, if I go in before the king, my husband, if he doesn't want me, I'm dead. Esther put on her royal apparel. <laughs> she ain't going to go in there with just anything. She's going into the holy of the kingdom. She's going before the king in the king's throne room. She's going to have proper dress. And stood in the inner court of the king's house. Over against the king's house. The king sat on his royal throne. So here's the royal throne. Here's the king's house. Evidently, and I can't be wrong, Esther does not live in the king's house. There's the throne. There's the king's house. Even she can't just walk up to him and say, Hi. The king sat upon the royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. Now, I don't know if that's the king's gate that it's been mentioning, chapter 1, 2, and 3, and 4. But there's a gate to his house. And it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in the sight. Okay, all's going well now. She's got favor of the king. God working behind the scenes. He could have had a bad day. He could have been just angry that day. He's been angry before. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. She's been accepted. And we do get a thing here as far as the gospel. We're not going to please the king, the father, God. Unless we go by his way, Jesus Christ. You just don't walk. People think they're just going to walk in heaven and God's going to be so pleased with them. No. Without Jesus Christ, you go to hell. You have the wrath of God. Esther has the merit of the king as God has the merit of the people who are Christians saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Then said the king unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther? Now, she's there for a reason. She ain't just hanging out. And you would think that here's a husband and wife. Oh, I'm just walking to see how my husband's doing. No, the king acknowledges she's there for a purpose. And he says, well, what's your petition? What is thy request? It shall be given thee to half the kingdom. And he's not going to offer the whole kingdom. I, I'm going to give you a blank check. But you can't have it all. Smart. And Esther answered, If it seemed good unto the king, being polite, proper, let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet, that's the first time that word shows up, banquet, that I have prepared for him. Who? Haman. She has set up a meal, a time of banquet, just for Haman. And I can't get what Esther 5 is doing, because she's going to ask again for the same purpose. Except if God is working behind the scenes and working on the pride and the proud and the loftiness of Haman. So let's see what happens. And the king said, cause Haman to make haste. Hurry up, get over here. Go get him. That he may do. <coughs> Excuse me. That he may do as Esther has said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. Plain and simple. Sit down at the table. Esther prepared it. Here's another feasting. We, how many feasts have been in Esther? And if this is a type of tribulation book, maybe there's a lot of holidays and feasting going on. 
And the king said unto Esther right there at the banquet of wine. They're sitting down there drinking. Maybe I don't know what to eat or whatever that. You know she's hungry. She's been three days and three nights without food. But she's going to be proper. So while they're sitting down having their meal, the king says, okay, what is thy petition? I, I know this is not it. You didn't come walking into the throne room to say, can I have dinner with Haman? King's got a little intelligence. What is thy petition? It shall be granted thee. What is thy request? Even to half the kingdom shall it be performed. Then answer Esther and said, My petition and my request is, If I found favor in the sight of the king, if it pleased the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, right from Haman, let the king and Haman come to banquet that I shall prepare for them. First time was for Haman. Now it's for you, the king, and Haman, that I will do tomorrow as the king has said. King, I ask for another banquet a meal. This time for both of you. And we can assume by the passage what happens is the king says, yeah. There's no answer of the king. Recorded. Then we get into the pride and loftiness of Haman. Then went Haman forth that day, joyful with a glad heart. Ah, look where I went. We're going to see that in a moment. I'm so important. I got to sit down with the king and queen. Woo but when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, I like I said, I don't know if that's the gate that's mentioned, and I think it was verse 1 or 2, but in the king's gate, that he stood not up, nor moved for him. I mean, Mordecai did not bow before him. Mordecai didn't stand up for him. Mordecai did not give him the time of death. So what did Haman do? He's so happy. Oh, I just had with the king. And of indignation against Mordecai. He's angry. He's bitter. You want a definition of bitter? There it is in the Bible. He just had, man, he sat with royalty. He had royalty food. He had a good time, it looks like. And he's been asked to come back again tomorrow. Oh, I got joy in my heart. Look at him. He's glad. Oh, oh, oh wicked Mordecai. How dare him not to reverence me? That's bitter. When your mood can change to anger and indignation against a person like that, that's bitterness. Nevertheless, Haman re reframed himself. I don't know what that was supposed to mean. He's held back. He wanted to do something. That moment right there, he's so angry. Whatever the Bible does not record what he wanted to do, he didn't do it. Get that. And when he came home, he sent and called for all his friends and Zerus, his wife. And Haman told them, his friends, his wife, and everybody, the story of his riches. Look how rich I am. Look at everything I got. Right. And the multitude of his children, his children. Proud. And all things therein the king had promoted him. Look at my job. Look what I'm doing today. But look at the position I am. Lofty. And how he had advanced him, gave him a promotion, above the princes and servants of the king. He is up there. Uh, almost like the second ruler, the third ruler of the land, like Joseph was. The Antichrist will be the second ruler of the world. We read yesterday or the other night about the seat. The dragon is going to give the Antichrist his seat. He's right up, up above there, above all the world outside of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. But, you know, they're not there in the tribulation period. He's D of D of all Ds. And guess who's going to anger the Antichrist? A Jew, two of them, Moses and Elijah, and then the 144,000. 
And it says, record as far as Moses and Elijah, they're going to kill Moses and Elijah. You see that going on? And he goes, oh, oh look how great, how, look how wonderful I It's all about me. I, I'm trying to think of something right now. It's not coming in my head. Uh, oh, I can't think of it right now. Oh, I bet you they're singing, for you're a jolly good fellow, for you're a jolly good fellow. I bet they're singing that to him. He's just loving it. Patting his spiritual uh, happiness of how great I am. And the Bible says pride goes before a fall, and he's going to fall. So with chapter 5, verse 12, Haman said moreover, Yea, Esther and the queen did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but myself. I was the only one there. <laughs> Exclusive. Standing room only. I've got the tickets. And no one else was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pride. Pride's a sin. And tomorrow am I, look at the look at the pronouns. I invited unto her also with the king. I'm going back tomorrow. Into the king's palace. You're going to fall. Yet all this availeth, that's the first time that word shows up, availeth, me nothing. Look how great I am. Look how wonderful I am. Nothing so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Where's your happiness? It's turned to bitterness. It's turned to envy. That guy's sitting at that gate. That guy's aggravating me. If I can just kill that guy, if I can just get rid of him. Oh, he don't worship me like you guys are worshiping me. He wants Mordecai and the Jews to worship him. He's got everybody here worshiping him. That's what Satan, Lucifer, the devil, and the Antichrist want. They want the worship of God. Satan had the nerve to go before Jesus Christ, our Lord God and Savior, the Son of God, who is God. He had the nerve to go up to Jesus on that mountain and say, you fall down and worship me. He had that nerve. And this guy, he's got all the blessings of everything. He's got everything. I guarantee his bills are paid. I guarantee he, he, you know, he's got a good house. And he has the nerve to say that one guy, that, remember, Mordecai is the one that's going to have the, all the orders to kill all the Jews on a set date. That's wickedness. That's pride. Pride is a, is a great sin that you need to pray for somebody who's got it because it's found throughout the whole Bible. It's wicked. But that Haman, I mean, that, that Mordecai is sitting in the gate. Then then says there is his wife. Now watch how wonderful this woman. This is this is probably a woman in the family of Job's wife. This is a wicked woman. You know, after all this, you know, she's got, and when he's talking about his riches, you know she's part of the riches. She's got the good stuff. She's got the fancy, you know, got the beautiful house, probably got certain, and she's just this lusting like her husband and he tells her this one little guy who's upset in him and look at the first reaction out of her mouth and no one's been killed in her family like job's wife nothing has been lost like job's wife nothing has been destroyed like job's wife look at her first reaction as there is his wife and all his friends sent unto him let gallows that's the first time that word shows up be made 50 cubits high. Not only did she say, oh, honey, go build some gallows, but make them, she gave them a measurement. That'd be like, you come home from work, oh, that, that guy at work, he gives me such a hard time. Well, honey, why don't you grab the gun to 45 and go kill him? 45 will do it. Go do it. Look at how wicked she is. That is 75 feet approximately. With the measurement, because Cuba has different measures. 75 feet gallows. 
That's a tall gallop. And I had this message one time in Sunday school, and I taught this message. It's the middle of the night. Can you imagine this guy kept his neighbors awake all night building those gallows? Maybe the king, too. Huh? Maybe the king, too. <laughs> well, the king, the king didn't know when we get to the layer of jabs. But he's king. I mean, I guarantee the hammer and the saw and all that. Listen. This guy made a news, and then they all get up in the morning like, what the? But they probably all knew. They probably had it. That belongs to Mordecai. 75 feet. That's, you know, how, you know what 75 feet is? You take two school buses and you park them. Bumper to bumper. If you take school buses and lay on top of each other, straight up in the air, that's, that's almost exactly 75 feet. I guarantee it made a notice. Fifty cubits high, and tomorrow speak thou unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged therein. You're going to go to the banquet? Use the time say, King, I got a special request. You know what she has the nerve to say to, to Haman? Now watch this nerve. The king said, Honey, Esther, what can I give you half the king? He didn't ask Haman nothing. That guy's going to go to dinner the next day that Esther's prepared for the king and for him, and he's going to have the nerve to be sipping his tea or whatever they're drinking. Uh, king, I have a quest for you to fulfill. That guy's got some nerve. He's going to interrupt a banquet so he can kill somebody. And guess who he wants to kill? The queen's uncle who has adopted her to be her father. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> and he don't know that. Can you imagine that, that opportunity doesn't rise? But you imagine if he did have that opportunity at that table and say, King, I want Mordecai to hang on the gallows I built last night. Can you imagine what Esther would have done? But the king will will get to, to the next chapter, Lord willing, the next night. The king says, I got honey, you got a request? He didn't ask Amen the time of day. So he's going to go to the king, ask him to, more, to hang Mordecai there. And then go thou in merrily. That's the only time that word shows up. With the king unto the banquet. Oh, so before you go dine, ask the king that you can have this man killed. Take and go kill him. Hang him on the gallows. Then go have your meal. And then you can be merry. Have a merry Christmas because you just killed a Jew. Hmm. <sighs> Deck the halls with the king banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made that night. Now, that's not a time to listen to your wife. Herod, no, Pilate's wife said, honey, don't have anything to do with Jesus, that man. I've had plenty of dreams about him. Now, he didn't listen to his wife. Error, mistake. Adam. Honey, here, had this fruit. He didn't listen to his wife. Mistake. And there are times you're to listen to your wife. They have great advice. Sometimes they don't. Job's wife, bad advice. When I guarantee Ruth was a woman that Boaz would listen to. Sometimes she would have been wrong. Naomi, it's all God's fault. Bad advice. So we're not at the we're not at the second banquet yet, but look at look at this family. They're all wicked. When we're gonna be happy when one man is dead. Boy, I tell you, that's in the there are people out there today, they're not happy until someone is dead. That is sin, that is wickedness. 